yeah hello and welcome back everybody to this channel now let's talk about another exercise case concerning value added tax and um, cross-border relations to other countries well um, here is case 12 marco nonsen is the owner of nonsen sa a european society with a statutory seat or you could also call it registered office and place of management in Düsseldorf in Germany. And in June, a customer from Berlin orders a crane for construction works with a contractual net price of 400,000 plus VAT, if any arises, from Nonsen SE. The customer wants to have this product sent to a site directly in Zurich, Switzerland, where he needs it for a local construction site where he is doing work currently. Your task is to solve the case and to mention every step which is logically necessary to arrive at the final solution and uh, naturally to give proofs and references and reasons for all the steps which are necessary to arrive at the final answer. That is always the task naturally. In a variant we will have then to think about um, what would be different if the customer came and uh, carried the crane to Zurich himself. Well, that's it. And that is what we have to think about. So we are going to start immediately. Well, so let's start with the beginning. Nonsen SE is an entrepreneur paragraph two one sentences one and three of the USDG because they have a constant or sustainable activity it is aiming at revenue and um, it's independent because the AG or the SE doesn't have a boss um, okay that said in advance, we should go to the events. Um, what do we have to check? Taxability first. With taxability, we have the choice between 11 number one and 11 number five. 11 number five would be an intra community acquisition, something which we have not yet spoken about. Number four would be an importation. That's both not the case. So it can only be number one, which um, entails a taxability. So we have to check that as always. We have an entrepreneur who is acting here, the nonsense. We have within the scope of the enterprise. Yes, um, the SE has no private sphere and um, they are doing business in producing machines that's evidently a part of their enterprise activities producing a crane on request is definitively something which is either core or um, ancillary business of them it is for consideration and the answer is yes they demand a price then do we have a delivery of a good? And the answer is yes, paragraph three, one USDG, because we have tangible good and we have the change of the position like an owner. So the decisive thing is now the place of the delivery. And this is a delivery with a movement of the good. So, under the basic rule, the place is where the transport or movement of the good towards the customer begins. And that is in Dusseldorf in that case. At least we presume, as the society has its seat and premises evidently in Dusseldorf, that there also the good comes from. In reality, we would have to check this because if the firm has its seat at Dusseldorf, but the crane is sent from 
let's say another site uh, production location or so in Munich then the place would be Munich always where actually the transportation begins now if that's the case all the five requests or requirements sorry of one one number one are fulfilled so the event is taxable in Germany um, however we should not forget that we cited again some rules. One one number one, two one, and three one and three six. And as we should be cautious people, we should before we go on check if these rules really contain the things which we just used them for. So let's have a look to the contents of the tax acts. So, <coughs> sorry, here we are again, and we need paragraph one first to have a look. Paragraph one, yes, paragraph one. Number one, deliveries of goods and services which an entrepreneur acting within the range performs in the inland for consideration. Yes, these were the five criteria which we checked. And number five and number four indeed would not be fitting. So it was right to decide that we just check one, one, number one. Now for paragraph two, we use this. No, that was not correct. Sorry, we use paragraph two as the reference for enterprise and the scope of the enterprise. Indeed, an entrepreneur is everyone who performs a business activity independently, and then a business activity is sustainable activity, which aims at revenue. That was correct. And that everything, the main and the ancillary activities uh, belong to the scope of the enterprise is indeed found in yeah, draft two, one sentence two. So, the only thing which is left for us to check is paragraph 3.1, the definition of a delivery. And indeed, here we had used the argumentation that deliveries of a good are a good, a tangible good, and the transfer of economic ownership or the transfer of control or the transfer of the position like an owner, however you call it. The place of delivery was um, seen by us as regulated by 3.6. Here it is, 3.6. If a good which is delivered is dispatched, transported, or what else, by the supplier, the customer, or someone else who acts for one of those two, then the place of delivery of that good is where the dispatching or movement of that good towards the customer begins. And that was indeed, in our case, then, Düsseldorf. However, there would also be a second rule 3.7. Um, if the good is not dispatched, that is not our case. And 3.8, another special rule, would also not apply um, because that rely, relates to things which are imported. So indeed, all the things which we cited seem to be correct. So we can be happy and go on to the next step of our case solution. So let us now deal with step number one, that is tax exemptions. And we will have to check or test paragraph four USTG. And particularly comes into the question paragraph six, exports. Now you probably remember that in paragraph six, there was a case distinction. Um, the treatment was different depending on who carried the good across the border. Uh, if the entrepreneur brought the good across the border to the third country, then it was always an export. If the customer, however, uh, carries the good across the border, then it's only an expert if the customer is a customer from a foreign country. Here, 6.1 number one is fulfilled. The entrepreneur, that is nonsense, carries the good across the border. So it is an expert without further consequences. 
Um, that means that it is text free under paragraph four, number one, letter A of the USTG. Um, just for the tax declaration, we need the tax base, 10, one sentence, one and two, everything which the uh, entrepreneur gets minus the VAT amount included therein. And here it's 400,000 minus zero, that's 400,000. <laughs> Is it 400,000? Yes, 400,000. One should always check it naturally because sometimes you make mistakes there. Tax rate does not play a role. Tax payer, okay. Um, the tax declaration, it has to be made by the tax payer. And that also applies to um, tax free things. So nonsense is the taxpayer. Paragraph three one number one, USDG. The arisal of the tax obligations here. So to be declare that would be thirteen one number one at the end of the preliminary declaration period during which the delivery was made here. Order happens in June, but delivery date is not given. So we can't answer that properly. Number six, no peculiarities. And number seven, input tax claims of nonsense as E for raw material, etc., etc., remain unaffected in spite of the tax exemption. Because when you do an export, then your input tax is not cancelled, although what you do is tax free. So that's it. And what do we have to check? We should check if this particular thing here is correct. So, sorry, 6-1, number one. We should check if that really was the right citation. Uh, it might be a good idea to have a look at this if you do not yet know it by heart. Naturally, the taxpayer rule and the arisal rule should also be checked. And 15.3, number one, should also be checked. Especially here, that last step is something which you should keep in mind. That is something which you should always comment. So let's make a short break and turn over to this thing, just to checking the references just now. So. First, we have to check paragraph four, and so do it for number one. Yes, and it says the exportation of goods is tax-free. If that is what is defined in paragraph six, so we have to look up paragraph six. Paragraph six, here it is. Paragraph six says a delivery of a good is deemed to be an exportation of a good. If during that delivery, um, the entrepreneur dispatches the good of delivery into the third territories, blah, blah, and so on. That seems to be the case here. And there is no other condition posed there, especially the condition which is in number two, that the customer must be a foreign customer, does not exist in the case of number one. So we have an exportation, and so it's tax-free. We also then had to worry about the tax base rule, and here it is. The tax base and for Ramana is the consideration or net amount. Consideration is everything which the entrepreneur gets or has to get in return for the transaction. 
either from the recipient or from someone else, including but without the amount of VAT, which is owed under the law for this transaction. Yes, that is what we cited correctly. And paragraph 15, there we also needed 15.3, which confirms that our um, supplier does not lose his right to input tax although the output was tax-free. So in contrast to general rules, we have a more specific rule for exportations. They don't ruin your, in, in, your input tax deduction claims. Okay, so that's already clear for us. So we can go on with the rest of the case. Okay. And this second part of the case is the variant of the case. Well, we still have um, to track first taxability. And there it's one, one, number one again, which we have to check. And there will be no change, but um, entrepreneur, yes, nonsense as he. Paragraph two, one, sentence one and three say that within the range of the enterprise activities or so, or within the enterprise, yes, it's probably even a main activity or a core activity to one sentence two USDG. Then it's for consideration, and the answer is yes. Monson as he demands a price. Sorry for the typewriting. Um, it's a delivery, yes. The um, crane is a tangible good, and sale is a change of position like an owner. Paragraph 3 1 USDG, we already had that. And the place of delivery is where the movement or transport of the good towards the customer begins. That is here. Um, this sort of, we assume that we would have to check if it's really true in real life. Um, so it's taxable in Germany. And then we have to check the tax exemption. And here it's again paragraph 4 USDG. And what cries for our attention is again paragraph 6 USDG. Is it an export? And here now we have the case of um, paragraph 6. One, number two has to be tested. Customer carries the good into the third territories. And um, well, but customer is from Berlin, so customer is not a foreign customer. And that must naturally be proven. So as this is very important, if somebody is foreign or not for the tax act, that is defined in 6.2 USDG. And so no tax exemption is granted. The event is fully liable to tax. Naturally, we are going to check all these vital points again and We'll have a look to the tax act slides again, just to be on the safe side. What we have to look up is this probably and this probably. Okay. So what we can see here is indeed six number two, the customer dispatches the good into the third territories or transports them into that area. And then the customer must be a foreign customer or some third alternative which doesn't play a role here and is unimportant in every other case too. 
And 6 to a foreign customer, as mentioned in paragraph 1, sentence 1, numbers 2 and 3, is a customer who has his residence or seat abroad, excluded in the um, so-called free zones. Or a branch of an enterprise which is located in the inland, but where the branch is abroad. Um, and then we have a clarification that the branch of a foreign enterprise which is located in the inland is not a foreign customer. So it depends on where the business of the customer or where the customer is. And we find out, okay, the customer is from Berlin and there is no foreign um, branch. So that's it, not a foreign customer. So things are taxable. Um, consequence. We are correct until now, and we have to go on now with the rest. So the tax base is the net amount. That's part of 10, 1, sentence 1 and 2, USDG. Now the law says everything which you get minus the VAT amount. Now um, the gross amount is here according to the contract plus VAT minus VAT included. So that's minus VAT. So we have a net amount, not surprising, of 400,000. The tax rate and tax under 12.1, we have a tax rate of 90% at the moment because um, paragraph 12.2, the reduced rate does not apply to construction cranes. So tax is 19% on 400,000, that is 76,000 euro. The formal aspects, the taxpayer is Nonsen SE under paragraph 13A1, number one USDG. The arisal is at the end of the preliminary declaration period during which the delivery, not the order, was made. Paragraph 13, 1, number 1, USDG, and that is here not given. Uh, it was a mistake of mine during the conception of the case. Invoice, just as normal. Uh, declaration duties, normal stuff. Peculiarities, some, no, nothing special, and seven input tax claims. Um, the customer from Berlin can, if he uses the crane for his enterprise, Enterprise, sorry. Well, enterprise, you see, um, deduct input tax. That's under 15.1, number one, USDG. And what else could be added is that um, the seller nonsense SE can also deduct all input tax relating to this output if paragraph 15.1 USDG is fulfilled because there is no tax exemption under paragraph 15.2 which could endanger the deductibility. So, okay, that would mean our case is all over and done with, and um, we are finished. Is there any rule which we would have to check? Probably 13a, and um, thirty one number one USTG. The rest is probably already known to you and me.
So let's have a small glance on the 13 rules and 13a. And um, then that's it. So here we have these nice rules, which we needed for the arisal of the text, paragraph 13.1, for deliveries and services in the normal situation A, if the taxes are to be determined according to the amounts which have been agreed upon at the end of the four unmeldings side from the preliminary declaration period, in which the delivery or service was made, the preliminary declaration period is for most enterprises the calendar month. Um, exceptions do not apply, and we um, find the taxpayer rules in 13a. In case of 11 number one, that was our case of taxability. The entrepreneur is the taxpayer. Exceptions could be found in 13b, but um, 13b does not apply. 13b1 refers to taxable and non-tax exempt services services rendered by an entrepreneur from other parts of the community territory, so from other EU states, not our case. And uh, 13b2 gives a long list of other things which might be, um, that might entail the reversal of taxpayership, so um, that the customer pays the tax. Uh, working contracts um, and services rendered by an entrepreneur from abroad, no nonsense is from Germany. Deliveries of assets uh, which have been uh, as a collateral transaction, blah, 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 does not show up. So indeed, uh, these rules were the correct ones, 13.1 and 13a, not 13b. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very, very small case and um, could learn a bit from it. Or even better would be if everything you have seen here was absolutely self-evident and nothing new for you. And I thank you for watching again and hope you come back. Press perhaps a like button. Recommend the channel to others which you like or recommend it to others which you don't like, whatever you like. And come back to the channel soon. Goodbye.